And welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News, another bifurcated transmission. We had uh, Rob Dew doing a great job in the earlier news segment today. Uh, and now we're going to be joined by Fritz Springmeyer. I had him on a few weeks ago, back on yesterday on the radio. But I wanted to have him back here, commercial free, for 30 minutes or so to expand our discussion of the New World Order's goals, the way they're controlling us, uh, and how it ties in with his... Uh, seminal work, Bloodlines the Illuminati, which, by the way, is available at InfoWars.com and is back in print. Uh, very, very exciting to see that happening. And Fritz, who's published more than 15 books, is getting his publishing company back going, uh, selling some of the books that he had in storage, and is now having the bank not just put a hold on his money, but take it. And uh, we're not going to get too much into all the details. Everybody's familiar with this, that this is a new phenomenon the last few years under the Patriot Act. It happens to our operation. It happens to little old ladies I know. It happens to my dad. It happens to everybody. Or when you try to use your credit card or your debit card to get gas, it says fraud control calls up to check. Uh, we're guilty until proven innocent. When you go to get a rent car, they're asking, where are you going? What you doing? Oh, you're visiting your mom? How's she? all going into a database. And the average American's not being told this. We're being treated like we're the bad guys. We're not the ones that the Justice Department caught framing people all across the United States with 98% fraudulent conviction rates in federal court. Do you really believe 98% of people are guilty? No. They have picked juries. They have lying federal informants that lie about people. The court system, all of it's discredited. And expanding on that, uh, the the system is now setting up this giant cashless control grid where you think Bank of America was bad and others announcing $5 fees to use your debit card. The globalists are admitting that once they have their global cashless society and even to use cash, there's going to be a camera there at the cash register that checks your digital photo face scan with the driver's license database. This is all admitted. They're talking about now adding biometrics face scan on top of groping your wife and children and putting in a microwave oven at the TSA. The TSA is now on the highways. They're training all of the vendors at the Super Bowl to spy on patrons. Next year it rolls out to all Super Bowls. This is all about total control, no Fifth Amendment, no Fourth Amendment, no nothing. It is a complete revolution against our republic. So we'll start... Uh, with that, with Fritz Springmeyer, who after being a political prisoner, and I've looked at the case, completely set up years after the fact for a bank robbery he didn't commit, guy with no criminal record before that, total set up with the feds on him because of this book. You talk about incendiary. I, I wish the stuff in this book wasn't true. When I first read it in the late 90s, I didn't believe a lot of it. But later, separately, c continue to confirm much of what's in here. And that's why they went after him. So I hope and pray if they ever set me up with some crime I didn't commit that you'll stand up for us as well. Uh, because we have a government that ships guns into Mexico and drugs back into the U.S. to blame the Second Amendment and got caught and no one has gotten in trouble. We have MF Global tied in with the White House, stealing a billion, two hundred million dollars, getting in no trouble, caught stealing it. And they're just like, that's what we do now. They've now announced they've taken all the veterans' pension funds. Those will be IOUs now. The federal pension funds have all been drained. That was in the news last week. IOUs. They're bringing it all down with martial law over it. All the investments, all the savings. Uh, they've destroyed the family. Everything is falling apart by design. Order out of chaos. So Fritz Springmeyer joins us. If you want the book, Bloodlines of the Illuminati, uh, you can get it at InfoWars.com. That also supports our transmission. But also, Fritz Springmeyer, again, trying to get all 16, 17 of his books back in print, or is it 19 total? I know a few are pamphlets. Uh, trying to you know, take a little bit of money we've given him to deposit it you know, from the books we bought from him. Other books he's selling himself that he has a little bit of in storage uh, th th that are out of print, basically, trying to do that. He's been there with this bank for, since he got out of jail a year ago. And uh, even when the check's clear, they just take it and say, we're keeping it. Uh, I mean, th th this is the new America. And this is the system where they turn you off. They turn your card off. They turn everything off. And no one's allowed to buy or sell. And then they're saying TSA will control the streets of America as the brown shirts. You won't be able to have a job unless they approve it. The unions are already voluntarily doing this. It is a total reign of darkness 
that is being set up there harassing the Amish, the farmers, uh, arresting people with lemonade stands, going after all people that are trying to be uh, self-sufficient. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, Fritz Springmeyer, thank you for coming on with us. So uh, let's break down uh, this Orwellian cashless society. Yes, yeah, great to be on. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I wanted to emphasize that because in talking with a lot of youngsters, uh, I realized that they grew up with this police state and they really don't understand the, uh, the enormity of what you're talking about. They think this is normal. Uh, this tyranny is not normal. They've gotten us really prepared for this Orwellian newspeak that they have, you know, war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. And they're, so they're calling this tyranny security. So they, they can come along. I know this case of this grandmother. She had saved her money uh, in, in a mattress. She didn't trust the banks. And she's moving from her place to move in with her daughter and she's going through the airport with all this cash well now they assume that you are guilty until proven innocent so they seize the money from her and of course she didn't have any money to get an attorney to to get her money back she just got robbed and by the way i was about so to I say i was about to say fritz it's worse than innocent or you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. It's worse than guilty until proven innocent. It's we're taking the cash out of your wallet. There are cases in Texas and other areas where they pull over old ladies. This has been on CNN, and they got two grand in their wallet. They say, why do you have this? And I'm, well, I'm Depression era. I, I keep a lot of money on me. And they go, nope, our new kangaroo law, we can just take that. No judge, no jury, no arrest. You can't prove it's yours. Even when people have bank receipts now, they're taking cash. When they raid houses for other reasons, find nothing wrong, find 10000 in your safe, they just take it. It's a criminal group of scum. I'm sorry, but you're right. You're guilty until robbed and enslaved and gang raped by narcotics trafficking goons. It's not guilty until proven innocent. It's guilty until we totally enslave you. That's correct. And so after I was on your show yesterday, I got to deal with that. I got my money back, but um, <laughs> welcome to the new world order. <laughs> uh, so, you know, a picture how the founders of this country would would feel if uh, if these kind of controls had been put on them. Back then in the revolution, you know, okay, you got to license your horse and have your horse inspected by the government before you can ride it. And you got to have emissions controls on your horse and you got to have a license plate on your horse and driver's license to ride the horse and then a separate driver's license for your buggy and uh, on and on and all these taxes. How would they have felt, you know? I mean, this was not what was intended. And the youngsters that have grown up in this police state, they really don't understand that this is not the way it was when, we, when I was young. It, it's changed. The police used to be your friend. Um, they were there to protect you. They were there to help you. But now they're out looking for someone's head to bash in. And, um, you know, it, it just so totally different. It, it, the it's not got the same feel at all. And the youngsters don't realize this. So where we're going with all of this is, you know, uh, increasingly the government's taking more control, but they're being, the, they're being very sly about this. And that's where having the bigger picture helps because it's more than the government. It's the people that are controlling the government, the families we've been talking about, the families that the bloodlines we were that are exposed in this bloodlines of the Illuminati book. So so the corporations are in cahoots with this whole thing. So what you're seeing is, is our cars are increasingly being controlled by the Internet as as we go on through the next few years. They'll even take driving your car away from you and, and your car will be controlled through the Internet and, and along with the rest of the cars on the road. So, you know, we already have these smart cars that talk back to us and decide what they're going to do. Um, it's going to be increasingly that way. And people don't people's guard is not up because they don't realize that these corporations are not don't have their best interest 
Uh, and um, No, they want to force all of us into an artificial environment, a controlled artificial habitat where everything is digital so they can track, trace, and force fines and fees and, 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 and things onto that that you can't escape. And so it's about an artificial system where you're dependent on them. They admit this. And that's why they're coming after the underground economy, garage sales. I saw a, a Fox News headline, $15 million fine for garage sale. And I didn't believe it, and I went and read, and there it was. What? Yes, I'm not joking. If they say you sold a recalled toy, even though you didn't know, or a table, or any of tens of thousands of recalled things every year, you then get a million dollar fine. And if they catch multiple items, it's up to 15 mil, and they come and just take your house. So, so again, uh, here's all the big banks, offshore corporations, tax exempt, involved in every crime you can imagine. And meanwhile, they're throwing the book at the general public. These are just monopoly men, and we're getting so close to this control grid being in place. Yes, very close. Um, and so that's what we're dealing with here. And... It's important for people to understand that there's controllers beyond the government. There's controllers beyond the corporations. The corporations, the governments, they're like unfriendly fronts for these, these power structures behind them. Uh, same way with, with uh, the organized religion. Organized religion has been set up in, in a, in, in, to a large degree to control people. But who's controlling those organized religions? What semi-secret fraternal organization is controlling it? And then what? And then who's controlling those fraternal organizations? So it's, it's like an onion that has layers and layers and layers to it. And what I've been doing is, over the last 25 years, is I've been peeling those onion, layers of the onion free and describing them to people in books like the one that that you've been talking about, the bloodlines of the Illuminati. Now, some people think you can't defeat the New World Order, but it's not even our job to defeat it. It's our job to stand up against evil and help others, because we don't fear those that kill the body, those that kill the soul. And the globalists themselves, as you know, they're all into the soul, the essence. They want to program us. They want to take free will. But... But, but we are having victories. The problem is people are asleep. They're in a trance. They're given a great delusion. But there is a great awakening. Even Zbigniew Brzezinski is now writing a new book about this. Hillary Clinton is admitting it. I don't think that the globalists uh, are invincible. Uh, but, but, but I want to get your take and view on that. Wow, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, this this whole interview is is unrehearsed, so I didn't know what we would really be discussing. But that's great. Yes, there is hope, uh, and I was asked to be a, uh, the main speaker down in Ashland recently, and I met a group of young people who are dynamically creating uh, alternative technologies to to give us back our freedom and um, make us self-reliant, um, perpetual motion machines and stuff like this. They've really done a lot of incredible stuff. There, there is a lot of technology out there that could solve the problems that we have. So I would just encourage people not to lose hope, but to turn their, their focus away from the controlled corporations who are only giving us technology in a controlled fashion and look to people like the this this young community down there in Ashland that's that has viable solutions there are solutions out there well that's there what I was about hope. to say we've got to stop using the big mega banks we've got to start using local banks and credit unions uh, we've got to abolish the, 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 the money monopoly power of the private Federal Reserve and get the currency back under the U.S. government control and create state banks and alternative state currencies that's in the Constitution or local barter economies. We've got to stop eating GMO. We've got to support the, the local businesses. We've got to shop at secondhand stores for clothes and Goodwill that sometimes has the coolest stuff ever. We've got to stop buying whatever the big corporate plastic culture hype is and be ourselves and true individuals. That's how the globalists can't control us. Everything they do is about trying to force us into their controlled parameters and, and the fake choices that they give us that are no choices at all. 
We've got to start organic gardening ourselves. We've got to start even with small steps, little things, and getting to know our neighbors and not watching as much mainline television. And all of this coming out of the system because it's all about, again, forcing us into this artificial habitat, controlling us. And I wanted to ask you about this. New Jersey, Arkansas, other states, now that cities all over the U.S. and Europe and Canada and Australia and New Zealand are saying we're not going to put toxic fluoride and other chemicals that the toxic waste companies sell us and make us pay for with their lobbyists in our water. The states are coming in and saying it's the law you'll drink this substance. And now California says we'll give your kids shots even if you don't say they can. We'll do it. I mean, they're really showing who they are, showing that they know there's a rebellion taking place. Can you speak? What? It's exactly what you're, you're talking about, how they are going to make our decisions and control us, and they're going to shove this poison down us whether we want it or not. Um, wow. Th those are amazing things. And, and to think that they're happening here in a country that considers itself the land of the free, it, it's just outrageous. Um, uh, yeah, I had to, when I was a teacher years ago, I had to bump into this. The government was trying to get me to report on what parents had not gotten shots for their children. And I was like thinking to myself, who made me a policeman for, for the, the world order, you know? Um, yeah, that's indentured servitude. Yeah, yeah. They're getting a free policeman out of the teachers. Um, and my son was going to a uh, Christian parochial school and the teacher was having the students, this was, um, he was 14, uh, the, the teacher was having the students spy, this was back in 1990, was having the students spy on their parents, keep secret journals. This was in a Christian parochial school and they were not, and the parents were not to be informed of this and I caught wind of it, and I asked her, well, who, who told you to do this? Well, they're teaching the Christian teachers in uh, state-run schools. To become certified as a teacher, you have to go through uh, a state program, and they teach them to spy. Now, now that sounds incredible, but P this is in my film, The Takeover, now out for 12 years. We have the documents and the news articles. When I first saw it, I didn't believe it. All over the country, they have six-month programs in sixth and seventh grade. I, I remember when I was in high school, I didn't take it, called law enforcement in, in intermediate school, in, 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 in public school, but it's also in private. And then they have other programs where a local deputy is certified by ATF, and it says they'll have access to the kids on the playground, all this other stuff. And they have them writing journals about their family life for the police, what's in the medicine cabinet? Uh, they give them cards and say you get money put on this when you turn people in for stuff. What's mommy doing? And, and, and now it's across the board this is going on in the government training centers and they're being public about it. And remember two years ago, Philadelphia and it turned out other cities, Sacramento, the laptops, the free laptops that taxpayers pay for, were watching the kids at home and the schools announced it and nobody got in trouble and this is the new way they do it. And uh, now they're putting cameras from Tennessee to you name it in the showers at the public schools saying we must watch your children, something might happen. So they're just training us. TSA will grope your daughters and sons and wives. We will watch your daughters uh, in the showers. Uh, we will tell them to spy on you. We will frisk them in the school. I mean, we're just being taught to be total prisoners. The whole country, the whole world is turning incrementally into a giant re-education camp. Yes, and then they're going to shove down what kind of poisonous water they want. They're going to give us what kind of food with poisons that they want, all, all in order to keep us weak and, and unhealthy because we're easier to control when we're not healthy. Um, yeah, it, it should outrage people. Well, again, they had a more incremental timeline. I know you concur with this in your analysis, but I want you to speak to this. They wanted more incremental, but they got so behind, and then people started waking up, so now they're accelerating, and uh, it's going to be a wild period, but I don't see it going well for them. Fritz, your view on that? Um, they've had their ups and downs. Uh, the, things did get slowed down. They, they, they initially were on the fast track, 
and then they switch to the slow track, which their slow track is way too fast for me. Um, and I, I don't know where, where we are. I know that they're scrambling to, to with their backup plans, um, but they have such enormous amount of power. The, the thing that keeps me going is, is I have faith in a good higher power that I know that whatever they do, they're being allowed to do it's like christ before you know when he was standing trial that last day he said unless this power was given to you by god you wouldn't have the power and so i rest in that assurance that um eventually you know god's going to bring good out of everything but uh like you say we as as good uh decent people uh need to stand up for what's right it's not even an issue of whether we're going to succeed or fail but it's an issue of what does a good person do when they're confronted with the government demanding that they drink poison that the government demanding that their kids be groped and and spied on when they're in the in the bathroom um that the government demands that we acquiesce to their tyranny well you're right fritz and uh and we've been talking here about 15 minutes, and I've got a lot of questions and comments about the Illuminati and things that are happening in the news. But uh, what's on your mind today? What's on your heart today? I mean, uh, you've got the floor for the next 15 minutes, Fritz. I'm going to let you roll on, on, on key issues of understanding that you think people should, should know. <laughs> I, I think uh while while we along the lines that we've been talking about i'll just um reiterate that where we're going people don't even see as a problem they're just they're just naturally going along with the flow of things and that is to tie everything every activity of our life is going to be tied in to the beast computer through their internet system where you don't do anything in life without it being connected to the internet and we're all going along with with that even this uh program is uh you know it they have made things so easy for us by use of the internet but we have to understand that, that there's a catch to all of this we we have to have our guard up because they're they're not giving us this technology and allowing us to use this without taking something away from us um they're giving with one hand and taking away with the other and and so we have to have our eyes wide open that there is an agenda of control just like you've been describing um when it comes to the book i was going to one of the things that came to my mind was is um uh, address uh one of the criticisms that uh, over the years people have said oh springmeyer got the names wrong on the families uh well that's interesting how did i come about knowing what were the primary illuminati families well i i started working in 1991 with some people that had been teamed together in the illuminati that were trying to come out and I gave them a list, a printout of powerful families and said, would you circle the top 13? And they circled one, or I mean, they, this wasn't even on the list to circle. For instance, the Van Dyne family. Well, the Van Dyne name didn't mean anything to me. I, I had heard of Van Dyne candy, but beyond that, um, it didn't mean anything to me but when they when they tipped me off about this then i discovered that yes if you go back in dutch history the dutch had something called the ridderskop uh, ridderskop was a group of nobility that met uh periodically and one of the few families that had been powerful down through through many centuries was the van der Dyne family so the the kind of information that they passed to me um I, I started confirming in in some incredible ways uh therapists for instance uh i i think of one therapist in california but there were others called me up and said fritz we are so appreciative 
uh, that you expose the Van Dyne family because I have a client uh, that's coming to me that uh, you know said that they were uh, uh, in the Van Dyne fam Illuminati family and I had nothing to make any sense of what they were saying until I saw your book. So while there's people out there saying, wow, this is wild stuff that Springmeyer is saying, I can assure you that the information that you're going to read in that book has, has been verified many times over in, um, by just so much feedback that I've gotten. That book came out originally in 1995 and uh, so I've had 15 years of feedback from people out there. And you've heard Alex Jones talk about how, you know, he got the book um, and initially it was like imp the impression was, wow, this is like way out there. And then once you're aware of the possibilities of things, you start realizing okay, here's the proof of this, here's the proof of that, okay, I'm, I'm seeing that for myself. And, and so there's been a lot of years for uh, me to see that the information that I was uh, researched back in, in, this book was, was researched back in about nine, 91 to 93, so it's almost 20 years. This, this information has stood the test of time. Sure, and I mean, I, I would say, and, I, mean, I mean, generally, it's all in the right direction. We know and confirm most of it's true. Nobody's perfect, but it's a, it's a really important work. Now, 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 looking at this, I just want to interrupt once. On, on page 35, the Fabian Society of Communism. I remember reading, oh, you know, Fritz says that their crest, their royal crest, this is like the heart of the New World Order, as you know, the uh, Rhodes Scholars, all of it, uh, socialism for the elite to make us dependent, a form of feudalism. And then later, I separately saw in a mainline publication that indeed, again, that their crest really is a wolf in sheep's clothing. I mean, wow, what a, what a wicked crest. Tell us about that. Yeah, the, the Fabian Socialists, uh, tie in with, for instance, the Astor family was was big into that, and uh, you start seeing connections uh, between the Fabian Socialists and a lot of things. People like H. G. Wells, um, George Orwell, and and so forth. We we think of them as being against the New World Order because H. G. Wells wrote so much that seems to expose it. No, these people were actually socialists, you know, Fabian socialist types that were in favor of it. And in, in contrast with us thinking that they're writing these things to expose it, they're writing these things how, they can come, how it can come about. Um, they're, they're conditioning us to accept what's coming down the line, really. Um, it, it's, a, it's a weird dynamic the way they... they uh, they oftentimes tell us what they're going to do before they do it to us. It's their little power play, you know, the master telling the, the slave, okay, I'm going to kick your rear end, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whip you 50 lashes, and you're going to stand there and take it and ask for more. <laughs> Yesterday we showed some of the Rothschilds wearing bathomet necklaces and balls you know, dressed in fine gowns with, with big chains around their neck with bathomet you know horned devils and you know there were a bunch of people in tuxedos and they're wearing big devil necklaces i mean i mean they really wear this on their sleeve yes and i've been down there in napa valley and taken a tour of the different mansions mandavis rothschilds next door and uh Occasionally, they'll give tours, and when you take a tour of the Rothschild place, you will see it's not real blatant right in your face, but right here, right there, will be one of these these occultic knickknacks, and um, the whole thing is really creepy. Uh, that, that's that's it in a nutshell. Creepy. Now it's the Russell Trust. They set up Skull and Bones, didn't they? Yes. Uh, interestingly, the, the logo of Skull and Bones, uh, we, we generally associate that with pirates, but back in the 17th, 18th century, 
um, Masons, Masons use that logo, and if you were buried, uh, they put a skull and bones, just it, looks, it looked like what we think of on a pirate flag, they put that skull and bones on a Masonic uh, graveyard. The, the point I'm making is, is the interconnections between all these things, when you start seeing them, it starts blowing your mind, and you start realizing it's all one big slimy gooey mess that's interconnected. Fritz, I was just thumbing through your book here for people watching on TV, and I remember reading this in the late 90s and thinking it is ridiculous to claim that the royal family is German in England. I mean, I knew that was true, but it's ridiculous because I knew they were German. And then the main line for all the other royal families, because they killed off all the other lines on record, to say that they were connected to Dracula and that the other royal lines, the Merovingians themselves, so they went back to Dracula. And then, and then now, that's all over mainstream news for about five years. MSNBC, you name it. Prince Charles now admits, yes, I go back to Dracula, and he's got a house there and hangs out in Transylvania. Uh, I mean, it is just in the Carpathian Mountains. And, and, and how did you stumble upon this in your book? And then I want the guys to search engine uh, Prince Charles, Royal Family, Dracula, and show people. I mean, again, I remember reading this in like 1998 or so. I'm going, oh, come on. Royal Family is a bunch of Dracula. Give me a break. They're not, and, and sure enough, they're not even a German royal family. And it turns out they're not even really from that area around Romania today. It turns out they're even more ancient family. And, and it, it's just wild. Yeah, I was looking for their heritage is the way I came across it. Um, it's because I was, I, I, I had quite a bit of uh, informants that were telling me how the center of power for the Illuminati is headquartered in London. Uh, MI6 is used by the Illuminati to daily send uh, messages throughout their empire. They use the the secret societies um, and the uh, the intelligence agencies to co communicate with their far-flung worldwide empire. A lot of things are actually communicated using human uh, messengers, surprisingly. And um, so I, w I was trying to understand the British royalty better um, because I began to realize that they played an enormous big role in this whole thing, and it wasn't by accident that the British ended up with this huge worldwide empire. You know, people who who don't realize that there's a hidden hand behind history would think, well, it just happened that this little island ended up owning, uh, uh, controlling a third of the world. Well, actually, it didn't just happen. The uh, international bankers in Venice, the Venetian bankers, intentionally gave the, the uh, English some um, technologies, cutting-edge military technologies, the Lantine sail. They, they provided them with the money to get um, special longbows. The longbows that the English used were a superior weapon, uh, far superior to the muskets, that Napoleon's army and the used. British knew about scurvy and vitamin C hundreds of years before anybody else. That's why they're called limeys. They could be five thousand miles from home, ready to fight, and the Spanish or others would, you know, have open sores, dying because they didn't know about vitamin C. Uh, I remember you and others talking about how. Uh, the Masons and others back to Egypt, and now they've proven it with the jade and, and the genetics in Mexico and other areas. There was worldwide trade before that. Uh, that uh, it, it turns out Columbus was given maps, and, and they already knew all that. That they had just in the Dark Ages purposefully given everyone false information, and were now ready to create the new Atlantis in North America. And, and now that's all coming out. And they're digging up Vikings all over North America. Yeah, exactly. Um, the the Greeks, the the mathematicians, had a very simple way uh, using very simple uh, high school level geometry, using high school level geometry um, and angles. It's very easy to figure out what the um, diameter of the Earth is. Um,
That, that's and they had they had figured it out fairly accurately. Yeah, they taught everybody it was flat as a joke. I mean, it's like telling everybody fluoride's good for you, or or cast sunscreen, saying the sun's bad for you. I mean, you know, they they just it's all part of their enjoyment. I mean, they yes. could tell people monkeys can fly, and they'd believe it. It was trendy. Yeah, well, uh, they told us that the Apollo spacecraft went to the moon, and then I went to. Uh, uh, Washington DC to the air and space uh, museum there and I looked at that Apollo uh, spacecraft that supposedly went there and the thing's not protected from the Van Allen radiation belt the, the guys would have been fried I mean the whole once I started trying to put the pieces together they didn't come together I'm like huh this is bizarre. But, but the I, I, intel I, I, I've got, Fritz, is, is they show us a fake space program because, the, as we know now, they've got 30 years advanced technology at least, and they don't want you seeing what they really got. Exactly. Exactly. You are right on track with that. It's all just a big show just to... Uh, it's really a magic trick. These guys are magicians. Watch my hand over here where... And then I'm going to... What I'm really doing is with, with my right hand... But watch my, my, my magic trick over here, and you won't see it over here. <laughs> uh, so we're all distracted with the, the bread and circus here. Meanwhile, they carry, carry out the real reality over here. Well, Fritz, yeah, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Encourage everybody to love life. To, uh, to love reality, don't let them traumatize you to the point where you give up on reality and, and take one of these alternatives like, like spending the rest of your life in front of the boob tube or turning to drugs or all the other crazy alternatives to check out from reality. Love life, people. And that, that right there would make a big difference if people would uh, not allow the, the traumas that they inflict upon us to um, beat us down. Well, I'm glad you s said that because it's not even about material wealth. They want to make us poor so that we're dependent on them. They don't want us to have that basic sustenance so that we are strong because then we can worry about higher things and then try to help others. They want us so desperate on the treadmill but I'm glad you, you know, at the end of this interview, bring up this point because so many people hear my show and they say, this is all scary. Are you trying to scare us? It's the opposite. I believe in people's passion, their courage. And that is, as Patrick Henry says, if you know the whole truth, you want to make preparation for it. Whether I was here telling you this or not, whether Fritz was here telling you this or not, reality's still there. And so, yeah, we all grow, we all learn. I mean, I read this book 14 years ago and thought, this is crazy, Prince Charles is not a secret bloodline to Dracula. And then I went to later, you know, a decade later, Ancestry.com comes out and turns out they're all a bunch of Transylvanians that then connect into Egypt before that. I mean, it's incredible. And, and, then, and then now I learn the Queen even says that. So it is beyond bizarro. Uh, it is beyond crazy. Reality is so much stranger. And I know that when we're covering these scary things, it, you know, there's robbers out there, there's killers, there's home invaders. So you lock your door at night and you got a gun. Not because you're in fear, you're in power. You're standing up and saying, I'm not going to be a victim. And so we're here risking our lives. I've been threatened with prison, attacked. They tried to set me up. They got you. I read the case, just, just cartoon level, you know, how ridiculous. Known informants, uh, felons, lying on a guy years after the fact, sending you to jail, no witnesses after you, except for these people of robbing a bank when you had, you know, 17, 18, 19 books, speaking to thousands. I mean, you know, hotter than a firecracker. And you're supposedly, while this is going on, robbing banks. I know they raided your house, tried to say you were growing marijuana, but couldn't find proof. And said you had extremist books in your house because they were pulling. Of course, you're reading things. I mean, it's amazing, Fritz, but here you are back, and it's just a testament that we're risking our lives to bring people this, and I wish it wasn't true, but we can't be like children and live in make-believe. Reality is what we must face. And, uh, Fritz, uh, we're going to end the interview here in a moment. I hope folks get the book at InfoWars. Dot com and um, of course my two films that are on one DVD, Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove and Order of Death that combo this are also available at Infowars.com. But 60 second closing statement, Fritz Springmeyer. Well, love life, keep your hope. Don't don't get beat down in, in life. Um, we all have to go through uh, problems, but use your problems for the best. 
and um, uh, keep keep on trucking and find the positives. We got to take the good with the bad, and um, and that's I guess my final bottom line is uh, I want to give everybody hope and um, encouragement. Uh, I, I'm not without having to go through my own problems as as you heard right at the beginning of this uh, interview uh, i i had to deal with with them taking everything i had in the bank and just taking it without any explanation they wouldn't even tell me why and uh, but it uh, it's turned out that they, they returned it um but these are the things that we have to deal with and not let them uh intimidate us thank you well, well said, Fritz, and uh, stay safe, and we'll pray for you, pray for us. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this extended Friday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Of course, I'll be back uh, this Sunday and every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, InfoWars.com audio streams, where you can listen on your local AM and FM dial, and back Monday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern, all on XM Channel 166, your local AM and FM stations, Global Shortwave, WWCR, all listings on the listing page um, at InfoWars.com under Listen. Uh, again, the fact that we're getting on so many stations, the fact that we've got so much support, the fact that Ron Paul is surging despite all the attacks, it shows that liberty and freedom and truth is popular, and evil has looked invincible many times in history. It's only when we say, okay, whatever, invincible or not, I'm coming on straight on against you. That's when we always turn the tide, and it's certainly all about testing us. Great job to the crew. Don't forget we're running a 15-day free trial deal. If you're watching this out there later, free on the web. Want to become a subscriber? See it first, along with the films and so much more. Nine years of material at PrisonPlanet.tv and support alternative growing media. Then please do so. And we're running for one more week that early bird special. Uh, that is 44% off a year membership, also at PrisonPlanet.tv or InfoWarsNews.com. Great job to the crew, dedicated folks. Couldn't do it without them and you, the viewers and supporters. Please spread the word about everything we do. Check out our Twitter at Twitter.com forward slash RealAlexJones and also the Facebook as well and the YouTube channel. Just one of our YouTube channels is right at 180 million views. All right, God bless you all.